So today we're going to be going over two things. Elmer, two things. Salvation, the power of salvation, and the gift of salvation. All right, those are the two things. And why we're going over it is because we've been talking about salvation. How do you get saved? And now we're, that was the last one about that, how you get saved. Now we're going into <coughs> the process of it and uh, what God is doing on our behalf behind the scenes that we don't really see. Um, and these are two areas. So I gave you guys a scenario last week about this Hawaiian gentleman, and I want to just give it to you again just to... Can you take the race out? Uh, let's just take out the races. No Hawaiians. Let's do Mexican instead. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> there was a gentleman, all right? Tore up guy, sinful to the bone, uh, murderer, thieving, uh, cheating, um, gang-banging, killer. All right, he goes to church, and he uh, hears the message, uh, Jesus died for your sins, he can save you, come on in, uh, he, he died for your sins, he can save you, and he hears the message, and um, he decides that he does want to, he does want to give his life to Jesus, he does want to be saved, so he walks, uh, that the, the the pastor asks if anybody wants to accept Christ, surrender your life to Him, walk up here. All right, and the guy does. He walks up and he says a prayer. And I asked last week was, if he said that prayer, when is he actually saved? Or is that prayer even enough? I think those are the two questions. Let me ask you guys again. First, let's ask, is the prayer enough? Yes. Jerson says yes. Anybody else? Carla says yes. Carla says yes. Is the prayer enough? And for David, who just walked in, we were, we're just going over the whole thing. I gave a scenario last week, and I gave it again. This wretched guy, sinful, killing, cheating guy, walks up, wants to be saved. He, the he, the preacher says, whoever wants to, come forward, and he does. And he prays the prayer, save my life. Is the prayer enough? All right, first question. <clears throat> Steve, what do you think? Oh, yeah. Sounds like he's sort of sure. All right, is the prayer enough to be saved? Let's change my answer, actually. Okay, I feel just... like this is a biconditional thing, though, because... It's de it depends. Like, yeah. if yeah. they... Yeah. Uh, right? Yeah. Give us more details about this prayer. Okay. Uh, <laughs> well, it, Romans 10 9, or 9 10, I forget what it is. If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that He rose from the dead, you will be saved. We're assuming he believes. We're assuming he believes in his heart. Yeah, we're assuming truly, he truly believed. Yes. yes. Assuming yes. he truly believed. Tru assuming he yes. truly believed. Then, yes. Okay, then at I'll that see him up there. Okay, so that was enough. Secondly, at what point in time is he truly saved? Say, does it is it between that time and when he actually gets baptized a few weeks later, then the deal is sealed? sealed? <laughs> or was it at that moment? Well, according to some people, it was before time even began, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> All right. What do you think, Elmer? Not sure? That, hey, we're just asking, man. I ain't trying to judge nobody. Wrong answers. None of that. We're just learning. When was he actually saved? When, at that moment, could he be excited? Yeah! I'm going to heaven. I'm forgiven. Now. I've got eternity. Or does he have to wait, you know, until he, um, until he gets better? Until he, his character, his conduct improves? Um, okay. For me, it was at that moment. Okay, Carlos says at the moment. What did you say? That very instant. When did he receive the Holy Spirit? Ooh, that's a hard one. That's, mm -hmm. Okay, was it, is it, is it with salvation or is it at another point in time? Um, it's both. Mm -hmm. Okay. Has to be. Has to be both, he says. Can yeah. we read that uh, our salvation is sealed by the Holy Spirit? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. 
Yeah. I don't know that you can have one without the other. I don't think that's how it works. That the self, that the spirit is the one that does the work, the saving. So both, we'll have to hear Christian's thoughts later. But you know, it's it might, it's deeper than that, of course. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, and today we're going to uh, talk about. So now that he's done that, how does he know for sure that he's saved? And there's two reasons, and actually there's three reasons. We're going to only get into two today. How do you know for sure? Is One is because of the power of God. Two, because it, salvation is the gift of God. And three, because it's the work of God. And the work of God is the one we're not going to get into today. Which that one is God's um, call, His predestined, His chosen and which is very comforting when you when you read you know when we study it but today we're going to go over the power and the gift of God assurance of salvation how can you be sure so uh, uh, we're going to read this verse to you it says but let us who live in the light be clear-headed protected by the armor of faith and love wearing as our helmet the confidence of our salvation so last week I was talking about that some of us for a helmet we have the little Tiki umbrella thing that you use in margaritas or whatever, you know that you just you know any little thing will just knock your salvation right. Out. Oh, I ain't saved. Uh, you know I, I sinned the other day or you know uh, somebody came up to me with a hard question. My salvation's gone. I'm I'm ruined. But it the Thessalonians, uh, you know, writer saying wear your helmet. The helmet. Wearing as our helmet the confidence of our salvation. So in our armor, your confidence is, your, your protection is your confidence <coughs> in salvation. So to protect your mind, you got to be so sure that you are saved. And today we're getting into some reasons, some deeper reasons why. Why you can be sure. Um, so we're going to get right into it. And if you guys have any questions along the way... Just bring, bring them right in. Come on up. Talk about them. Uh, but we got a few verses we're going to get into. Okay, first, the reason why you can be sure about your salvation is because it's the power of God. All right, the power of God at work. And I got a few verses I want to read with you. Uh, it's in John chapter 3, verse 3 to 8. And if somebody can see it or has it, if you can read it. Uh, just... Just verse 3 for now, then we'll go... No, let's read the whole thing, 3 to 8. All right, Kim, go ahead. Thank you. I said, <clears throat> um, Jesus replied, I tell you the truth, unless you are born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. What do you mean? exclaimed Nicodemus. How can an old man go back into his mother's womb and be born again? Jesus replied, I assure you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and the spirit. Humans can reproduce only human life, but the Holy Spirit gives birth to spiritual life. So don't be surprised when I say it. you must be born again. The, the wind blows wherever it wants. Uh, just as you can hear the wind but can't tell where it comes from or where it's going, so you can't explain how people are born in the Spirit. Okay. Wow, that's me living translation. Uh, okay, so verse 3 is the is the powerful. Jesus replied, I tell you the truth, unless you're born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. All right, so let me ask you a question. How the heck can any of you or me be born again? How can you do it? What can you do to, to be born again? I mean, anything. Not, don't mention the gospel right now. Any other way. To do it, born again. Any is there an alternative to it? Being no. born again. No. Nicodemus asked, "Well, how can I go back into my mom <laughs> and do it over? Now, how could I be, you know, born again?" And he was trying <laughs> to figure it out. What? Um, so. What can you do? You know, and and I think the the reason why this is so powerful is because there is no way there's, it's 
impossible to be born again. And, and it's not talking about, you know, you starting off as a little child again physically. It's talking about a spiritual rebirth. You know, you, you in your soul and your spirit are, it's, you get a new start, you're transformed, you get brought to life. All right, that's what he's talking about. But unless you're born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. That is a, that is a requirement to being saved, is you must be born again. And there's not a thing you could do to do it. Nothing. You couldn't buy it. You couldn't earn it. You couldn't... I don't even know. What else could you do? You know, you couldn't try to do it with some kind of special uh, surgery. Nothing. You could try for a million years. You're never going to do it. One thing alone is that God's power in an instant, boom, done. Amazing. Okay, that, so we're talking about the power of God. So uh, salvation, you know, some of us here is like, I don't know if I'm really saved. And why are we so confused? Or why are we so uh, doubtful? And I, me included, you know, why do I feel that way? But I think it changes your perspective when you look at what what's all going on. When, it's, when you have very, very little, if anything, to do with it. You need to be reborn, all right? And you, I am, and unless somebody at some point in history or future has another option, there is no alternative. You can't do it. No one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and the Spirit. So, it's not by human will or passion, which is, you know, how Carla was born. Their parents decided, let's have a girl, you know? And they did it. I'm sure they just said child. Yeah, child, probably. <laughs> And it happened. And here she is. But you can't just say, Yeah, I want to be born again. I want the Spirit in me. That's not how it works. You, you, could, you can't do it. God gives birth to a new you, the spiritual you. God does it, alright? It's a power of God. Alright, so that's just to start it off. And if you have any questions, anything, comments on that? Okay. Power of God. All right, let's get the next few verses. Uh, Carla, do you want to hit us? Yep, First Corinthians 1. Uh, let's do Romans. Romans first. Romans 1. It's on there. If anyone... See, I got the New Living Translation on there. Verse 1. Six, <clears throat> okay, 16 and 17. Hit us. Ooh. This is my thesis. Gee. <laughs> For I am ashamed, for I am not ashamed of the good news about Christ. This is the power of God at work, saving everyone who believes, the Jew first and also the Gentile. The, God, the good news tells us how God makes us right in his sight. This is an accomplishment from the start to finish by faith. As scripture says, it is through faith um, that a righteous person has life. All right, so Paul says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. I'm not ashamed of it. It's the power of God at work, saving everyone who believes. The Jew first and the Gentiles, or the Greek. All right, so uh, I was always hung up on that. It's Jews first, what the heck? You know, why do they get special attention here? That's just reality. They, did, they got special attention. They were God's chosen people. So it was them first, and us second. Leftovers. No. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, uh, the Jew first, not, this is the good, this good news tells us how God makes us right in his sight. And so we're going to go over that in a second, but for I'm not ashamed of this good news, but it is the power of God at work, saving everyone who believes. Okay, so we're talking about salvation. We're talking about how we know that you can truly be saved. How do you know if you even are saved? But how do you get saved? You know, you, you, you believe it. But some major thing happens that's bigger than anything you could do, and that's the power of God 
at work, saving you. It's a God's power. And, what, and let me ask you a question. What is the power of God working through? You know, how is this all taking place? If you were just to read, uh, reading that verse, it seems like the, there's, there's a, uh, what's the word? There's a vehicle this power of God is moving through. Huh? Binding? You think it's binding it? Yeah. No. Beautiful. <laughs> how's it? How's the how's the power getting to you? It's through something. Spirit of God. Well, yes, but there's something else. Oh, faith. No, so there's no? something else. I mean, just from this verse, there's something in there that <coughs> something has power in it. The good news. Yeah. Oh, Christ. The good news. Mm. Yeah, euangelion, I think is the Greek word. Euangelion. euangelion yeah. It's a, it's, there's power in a message. It's crazy. You know, this good news. And, you know, some of us, I, you know, I used to think that, oh, well, you just say the gospel, boom, people will start falling, and it's all, you know, that's all you got to do. There's power in it. Just, just say the word, and bada-bang, you know? It's like magic. But that's not... Necessar- that's not how it is. It's it's not a magic phrase. That's not what it is. It's it's a message, and it's a truth. When it's communicated and people believe it, something powerful happens, and they're they're born again. Uh, they're saved. Some and it's it, we're gonna. I think it's in the next verse. We'll read a little bit before that. But to some people, that sounds crazy. Are you telling me that it's just a preaching this word to people? You know, using using uneducated people, anybody could anybody could deliver the gospel message, and people could be saved. Uh, it's got to be harder than that. But there's power in the message because it's it's true. Um, so I was listening to uh, R.C. Sproul a little bit, and. Uh, he mentioned something, and I thought about it. Uh, you know, you guys see the movie The Nun lately? No. No, bless you. Demon bless you. You don't watch those demon movies. Uh, but in the movie, there was this demon presence, some kind of witchcraft thing coming out of this, uh, I don't know, some spell. And the only thing that could contain it, was it the blood of mm-hmm. Jesus? It was the actual <laughs> blood of Jesus. And there was power in his blood, and so all they had to do was just pour it, was it pour it on some or the girl, sprinkle it, sprinkle it <laughs> and that the power was in the blood, the actual physical blood. Um, and uh, you know, you think about that, you know, like what if, you know, we see movies. What if you found the cup Jesus drank from, right? It was uh, oh, that's the uh, that's uh, Indiana Jones. Indiana right? Jones. You know, they were looking for the cup, and if you drank it, you'd have eternal life. <laughs> Um, I've heard that R.C. Sproul is saying that somebody had the pants of Joseph, his dad, uh, his pants. And if you had those pants... You wear pants. Oh, well, yes. Does everybody know? Or, or Mary's breast milk. Somebody preserved it. And if you had that, the power is certainly with you. You know? Or all these things, you know, you, know, you, get, you get that... Even there was even at times store which is biblical where uh, Peter walked by and his shadow alone would save people. You know, some people took his uh, Paul's handkerchief. Yeah. yeah, and it would say, you know, there's. But the I, the I think where we get it. Yeah, that's amazing. I mean, that's all another topic, but is that we kind of lose sight of how powerful. The gospel alone is that you don't need anything else. You don't need it accompanied by the actual blood of Jesus or the the cup he drank with the the power of the gospel. Paul says that this power is at work saving everyone who believes it. It's powerful. That alone, not a thing you could do extra, saving people. So there's power in the gospel. So that message you guys heard, you know, when, at one point in time, you heard it in your youth that, um, yeah, I do believe it. Yeah. And I actually want to get baptized. And I want to commit my life to it. There's power in that. It's something God does. 
which we don't really comprehend, but he does it. And listen to this part. It says, this is accomplished from the start to the finish by faith. It started by faith, and it's finished by faith. As the scriptures say, it is through faith that a righteous person has life. And we're going to get into later in the Galatians where it talks about, you know, you started, you started, you know, when you got saved, it was when you believed the gospel, and now you think you can maintain it by doing all these extra things. Um, we're, we're going to get into that later. Faith in that message saves you. All right, let's read another one, 1 Corinthians 1.18. And actually, it might, might help us if we started a little earlier. 1 Corinthians 1.18. If anybody has it, you can feel free to read it. <clears throat> All right, Abigail, go ahead. No, it's right here. The word of the cross is folly to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. Hmm. Mine says, the message of the cross, the word of God, is foolishness to those who are headed for destruction, but we who are being saved, it is the very power of God. Hmm. So, you know, a lot of people today feel like Christianity is retarded. You know, it's crazy. And, and you know what? At that time, too, they did. Uh, it says, uh, in verse 20, it says, So where does this leave the philosophers, the scholars, the world's brilliant debaters? God has made the wisdom of this world look foolish. Verse 21, Since God in His wisdom saw to it that the world would never know Him through human wisdom, He has used our foolish preaching to save those who believe. It is foolish to the Jews who ask for signs from heaven, and it is foolish to the Greeks who seek human wisdom. So when we preach, so when we preach that Christ was crucified, the Jews are offended, and the Gentiles say it's all nonsense. And the last one, verse 24. But to those called by God to salvation, both Jews and Gentiles, Christ is the power of God and the wisdom of God. So it's what he's talking about is the message of the gospel. You know, the Jews said, no way. You know, there's, you need to get circumcised. You need to maintain all these things. There's no way the gospel, the message of this Jesus doing this is true and it's crazy. And there's no way it can certainly save you. But to us who are being saved, it's God's power. I don't know how it works, but he did it. All right, so how can you be sure that you're saved? Because God's power did it. I don't know. You know, the, when I heard the gospel, something happened in me. I don't know. So let me ask you a question. Uh, oh, yeah, so that was just some things some people say. To some, the gospel sounds dumb, crazy. Uh, Jesus died for sinners. Or believe in Jesus who died for sinners. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't think so. You know, he didn't do that. Did you? Did Jews kill, stone people for it? All right, that's one. All right, and let's go over the last one. Uh, I'm not going to go over that. Salvation is a gift of God. All right, so two things: salvation is a power of God, and it's a gift of God. How many? What's our time? Anybody know? It's okay. So, salvation is a gift of God. Okay, so we're all doubting, like, mm, I don't know if I'm really saved. Still, even today, even this week, I'm sure some of us. Steve, maybe at one point this week, you know, he wondered, he woke up. I'm a filthy sinner, you know, and i got to figure out how to get this. I don't know. Maybe not. But we all have our moments. But if we're supposed to be confident in our salvation, we need to know how it works. Salvation is a gift of God. Um, so let's let's read this one. Romans 6.23. Somebody can hit us. Hannah, you want to hit it? It's right here. For the wages of sin is death. 
But the free gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. All right, you want to explain that for us a little bit? You're going to die for your sins. Ugh. You I have to be so honest. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, yeah. Okay, you're going to die for your sins. What else? The free gift of God is eternal life. By grace. The gift of oh, the hey, Lord. Didn't get that far. Oh. <laughs> All right. So the wages of sin is death. Means um, because Elmer decides to sin on multiple occasions throughout the day, <laughs> you're gonna die. Okay. That's what you deserve. <clears throat> Getting what you deserve. Your wages, your payment, your reward is death. The wages of sin is death. And you know what? All of us have sinned. All right? I'm sure at least once this week, somehow, some way, if you just looked at the Ten Commandments alone, you failed. You know, number five, being late to church. Several of you. <laughs> Hell. <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, the wages of sin is death. Okay? So we all deserve to die. Everybody. But, but, the free gift of God, or some versions just say gift of God, is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. All right, so I think we skip over this way too quick. Okay, let's just, one more time, you deserve death, which you will die, every one of us. Some of us more earlier than others. I'm hoping to go to 90s, but, but I'm going to die. That's my penalty. I will die. And even beyond that is I actually would go to hell, if not for the free gift of God. So, the word gift is, in Greek, is charisma. That's not actually how you spell it, but that's a gift of grace, a free gift. Okay? So you deserved to die, go to hell, but somebody gave you a gift. Uh, I don't know, like on... I thought I heard in Fortnite that people can give you stuff, or maybe that was just in the that Dove movie. What was that? With that girl, the Bone Arrow girl? Uh, Hunger <clears throat> Games. At Hunger Games. You know how they like the crowd gave her a gift? She needed something, <laughs> ointment, to, and she got burned and all that. Um, you want to say something? No. Okay. But, you know, you think about that, that she, you know, she, of course she was trying to earn the crowd's favor and all that, but she just got it. It was a gift. She couldn't try and purchase it or anything. So charisma is a gift of grace, a free gift. Um, <clears throat> the definition is a gift of grace, a free gift, undeserved favor, undeserved. So anybody here who has salvation, say some of you guys are so confident, of course I am saved, you know. <laughs> Why wouldn't I be? You know, all this stuff, uh, you don't deserve it. There's, you should have zero pride in your salvation. You, sh you should be totally uh, humbled because there is not a way you could earn it. You certainly do not deserve it for not a thing you can have done or ever will do. You do not deserve it. We, we should not be saved. That's what the verse is trying to tell us, that we deserve to die. And we deserve to go to hell. Some more than others, you know, like I'm sure David might deserve it more than Kimberly. I don't know. No, I'm just kidding. Some more than others, but that's not the point. It's undeserved grace. All right, so God gave you a gift. We're coming into Christmas, and I know, you know, that a lot of people are giving gifts away. Yeah, giving right. gifts. <laughs> All right, and, and that's... Just think about that. If someone were to give you a gift and you never gave them anything, and he's like, "What the heck? Oh, thank you. You know, uh, you're a filthy wretch, but I love you. You, know? <laughs> uh, you never give me anything, but I here's a gift. All right, you guys. I think for us, for you to be confident in your salvation, you got to realize that it's a gift alone, undeserved. It's free. You do not deserve it, okay? And if you're still confused, let's read the next verse. Ephesians 2.8. And David, would you mind? Ephesians 
God saved you by His grace when you believe, and you can't take the credit for this. It is a gift from God. Okay. So, what can you do to be more, uh, or what could we have done to maybe earn this salvation? Nothing. Are you sure? Earn it, you know? I, yeah, I can't. God saved you by His grace when you believed. But what about His grace? How can you earn His grace? You can't earn grace. You can't earn His grace and you can't earn His salvation. You can't earn the gift. Sounds like your hands are tied. That's how I felt. Sounds like your hands And you can't take credit for this. It's a gift from God. No credit can be taken from this. It's a gift of God. All right, any questions up to this point? Anything that's messing with your brain? Samuel told us last night that you have to be willing. Mm. So therefore, is the willing a sort of Earth. deserving? Deserve. Yeah. <laughs> It certainly seemed like that. We were talking about David last night, and when he looked at his heart, and that's why God gave him the spirit because he was he had a good heart. But he also took it away from somebody to give it to him, which makes it a little complicated. Yeah. No? Well, as we're going to look into next week, that God had this thing planned all along. <laughs> you know, <laughs> before David came out of the womb, God already knew. You're mine, buddy. <laughs> You know? <laughs> yeah. And you know what? Again, looking into it, it's a little scary, but how comforting to know that God chose you before the world was even, before anything, I chose you, you know? And I think today the whole point of going over this is to realize that you're, you have, like I said, nothing or at very, very little, if anything, to do with your salvation. You getting saved, you having eternal life. We all think that it's all us. Oh, it depends on how I act in church. You know, it depends on all this. And we, again, we're going to touch on that later. But it, the the act, the the act of saving is Jesus alone. When He died on the cross, He saved you. When you believe, when you when you trusted in Him, He saved you. Eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. God saved you by His grace when you believed, and you can't take credit from this. It's a gift of God. All right, so let me ask you a few questions. Uh, why are you saved from God's wrath and given eternal life? Why? I ought to think about that too. Why are you saved from God's wrath and given eternal life? I think what I was trying to say is why would God save you? What's the point? Yeah, what's the point or why you, you know? <laughs> why would God save you from his wrath and give you eternal life? Why would he do it? This is fun. It's yeah. fun. All right, Elmer, say he was God was going to save somebody. Not you. But somebody else. <laughs> I'm just kidding. If he were to do it, why would he do it? Why would he save Josh? Why him? Why go to Honduras when you're right here in America and save somebody? <laughs> I mean, not Honduras, sorry. Venezuela. Why travel all the way over there when there's plenty here in this church? You know, before he got here, I mean. <laughs> Why are we saving God's wrath? Because He wants you to be up there with Him. Yeah. He loves you. Alright, that's why. Because He loves you. So today you got to take all the pressure off yourself. Because there's very little, if anything, you have to do with this salvation. What can you do to get this saving? Nothing. Hmm. We're going to read some scriptures later that will you know, make you think. Exciting. To make you think about that. Yes, sir. Um, forgot which letter in Peter, but I, well, he only has three, I think. But one of those, he literally says, 
uh, those who uh, those of us who have hit the lottery. Oh really? He, you know, that's the verbiage he used. Wow. Almost uh, admitting that he himself did not know why God chose him. Wow. But he felt he won the lottery. Wow. Those of us who have won the lottery, I write to you. Wow. So there that's is no. Crazy. It's you know in Ephesians we're told that God works all things according to the counsel counsel of His own will. So the reason is found in Him. He knows why. He we knows don't. Why. Yeah. Think about that. Out of all the fishermen on the shore, God walked up to Peter's boat. Follow me. You know? Mm -hmm. Like, you know, he hit the lottery. He didn't know what he was getting into. He, hey, he died on a cross. Peter died terrible death. But he felt that he, he won the lottery. That's pretty cool. So what can you do to get this? Not a thing. The fact you even heard the message is a miracle. The fact that it got into your ear and it went to touch this portion, you know, your heart, which is it, somewhere in there, <laughs> through everything, that's a miracle alone. The fact that you can believe it, you know, which some of you guys are on the fence right now. Some, you know, everybody knows in their, in their yeah. selves. Can you force spiritual rebirth? Can you, is there something you can do to just, hey, you definitely have to do this, this, and this. You're going to be, I don't know. Can you force it somehow? Nope. Yeah. Spiritual rebirth. Nothing human or physical about this. God does it. Undeserved. Uh, and the last question, when you doubt your salvation, okay, this is for you and me. When you doubt your salvation, are you doubting, is it, is it, could it be you doubting God's power and gift to save you? All right, so when you doubt, you know, when you go throughout your day and you, and you think that, you know, you're not really confident that you're, you do have eternal life. I am saved. God is with me. And I am I do have a relationship with him, and I, you know, and I'm moving forward. Is it is it because, really deep down, you doubt that God has the power to really save you, once and for all, or you just don't understand it? Yeah, or you don't understand it. Well, Something's on his tongue. <laughs> for myself, I I doubt sometimes. I doubt my own salvation, but what makes me doubt is not. I, uh, for me, it's never been a matter of whether God can do anything. It's just a matter of whether He is willing to do it. And it's usually because of my thoughts and my actions, I ask myself, why would God right. save me? Because I know myself. Right. Hey, that's a good, good point. Yeah. yeah. When we think about some of the things we think about, hmm. I don't deserve this. Uh, so just just to close, uh, anything you guys feel? What makes you guys doubt your salvation? Just you know, throwing the question out there to you guys. Jerson shared his when he looks at his self and what he does, what he thinks. Why would you want to save me? I think for me, it's looking at others like why not them why me Cause not that I know that other people aren't safe. well I do because you know they're like when I was in Israel like my Muslim friends out there uh, like they'll never like as much as I tried they'll never accept Christ so what different like they were born into that family particularly so why me right why not them? Yeah, how much of the world doesn't claim to be Christian? Mm -hmm. Good All chunk. <laughs> Most of it. All those Hindus, mm -hmm. Buddhists, Muslims. Yeah. Atheists. Atheists. Oh. Jews. Yeah, we're in America. Everybody says they're Christian, but we're, we don't. This isn't the whole world. There's mm -hmm. a huge portion of the world. 
out there. Yeah, why you? What else? What else makes you doubt your salvation? Any thoughts? Steve? You ever have doubts? Yeah. What makes you doubt? Myself. Looking back at the things that I did. Yeah. Any of us still sin today? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Not David, though. <laughs> you know? I, you, when, we, when we mess up now, we doubt it. I do. You know, if I mess up bad, I just like, man, I don't, maybe I ain't really saved. Maybe this didn't work. And it's like, I've been, I've been saved for so long. How am I still messing up? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know? Because we, we start looking at ourself. You know, we take the focus off Jesus and we start looking at ourself and mm-hmm. then, mm-hmm. <laughs> no way. And I think, yeah, what, what this whole point is, is that you've got to shift the focus, the saving is not you, you. Mm-hmm. it's Him. Jesus saved you, and you need to trust that His work does it, that there's power in that message, there's power in that truth. It's not a magic phrase or a magic word, it's a real, it's a real event, it's a real person who really did this, mm-hmm. the gospel. You know, and, and you know, you think about... Um, Maybe the focus we put on other things. You know, I think about that as a youth ministry. You know, we have activities and we try to do death lives or things fun to to reach people. But, you know, all that is great if we miss the one most important thing is the message of the gospel. It's powerless, you know, because that's where the, that's where the power is, is in the message of Christ and what he did. And God just uses that somehow like Paul was saying you know we preach Christ crucified it's foolishness to people but to the people who believed it's the power of God saving and working Um, so I think that's where I've been finding my more confidence in in my salvation is that I think the enemy the devil uses that to his advantage to when you know if you're supposed to wear the helmet of your salvation, and you're looking at your muscles, you know, and you're like, I can't even, you know, this helmet, I don't deserve this. This helmet's nice, you know, look at this thing. This thing's got gold on it. I don't, man, look at me, I'm all dirty, you know. He could use that to tear you down. And, you know, God wants you, it's very clear in the Bible that you've been sealed. And you need to be confident in your salvation. And, and a way to help you is to realize that God sh- is saving you. And next week or the week after, we're going to get into that, that God actually chose you. So what, let me see what the time is. Oh, man, it's late. That God chose you. So, I'm sorry. So, uh, again, that's it for today. Uh, we're going to go into it next week even deeper than this. Uh, if, if it isn't next week, it's the week after. I'm trying to figure that out still. So um, let's, let's just say a prayer. Thank God.